the best way for Europeans to assist in the black liberation struggle is to work within your own community where the main decisions are made that disproportionately affect American African people. The decisions that bring about the bias, the discrimination, the disproportionality and the inequity are not made in the ghettos of black America, they're made in the suburbs of white America. So any white person who is genuine in their interest to help fight against the systemic ills that impact African people in America would do best to work within their own community because it is the people who look like you who make those decisions. So work with your elected officials, work with your leaders of business, work with the white community activists, the lobbying groups who are always trying to encroach upon black rights and bring about that change. One of the problems that I have with the white liberals is they're so quick, and this is not you, sir, but white liberals are so quick to want to join the black organization. They're so quick to want to join the black protest, but that's not where you can best use your energy. You can best use your energy by standing up to and pushing back against those white people in your community who are responsible for making the decisions that disproportionately affect blacks. Thank you, sir. So operating within my own community and using my advantage that I have by the racist structure of the United States. So using the advantage that I have to, to counteract the, the racist voices and try to give black people a better platform. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely. Because when you look at the history of white liberalism in America, although there have been initiatives by white people to address isolated issues that affect us, so there's white people who fight against crime. They fight against poverty. They fight against miseducation. They fight against uh, black children being taken from their homes. They fight against mass incarceration. But there has never been a movement ever in America by any white person to systematically eliminate white racism and white privilege. They always focus on little projects that deal with Band-Aid issues, but they never attack the overarching causes that give rise to the Band-Aid issues that they spend so much time on. In other words, don't just attack poverty, attack the cause of poverty. Don't just attack mass incarceration, attack the cause of mass incarceration. Don't just attack homelessness, attack the causes. And the causes of all of those are white supremacy and systemic inequity. And that's where the attention of white America should be placed. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Caller, thank you very much. Hello? All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks for the call. 888-546-8742. 888-546-8742. Let's uh, get another call in here. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Uh, this is Andrew in Queens again. Ah, um, okay, Andrew. Yeah, better. So, much, well, much better. Go ahead. Yeah. So first of all, I, I want to thank Dr. Umar for, for the great work he's doing, educating our, our people. Um, and I, I agree with everything that you've said um, so far. Getting back to that uh, interracial dating, uh, mm. I agree with what he's saying, you know, regarding, you know, the black celebrities, male celebrities that, you know, they go for anybody outside mm -hmm. of their race. Um, but I notice whenever speakers bring that subject up, they always give the black woman a pass because the black women do the same thing. Most educated black women and, and so-called, well, so-called educated black women and uh, so-called successful black women, they go outside of their race as well. So it's, it's not just a thing with black men. It's, it's something with, with black people in general across the board. So I was just wondering, you know, how we felt about that. Because uh, whenever that subject is, is brought up, I notice they always give the black woman a pass and they always, you know, talk about these um, black athletes, which to mm. me, those, those black men are, are, are in minority. Um, I feel like from what I've seen, there are more black women that, that go outside of their race than, than even black men. So I was just mm -hmm. wondering, you know, if you want to comment on that. Not okay. I agree with you. Black women are also guilty of the snow bunny crisis. I would agree. <laughs> However, I would disagree <laughs> that this is a bigger problem with our sisters than it is with our brothers. And the statistics would support my argument and not yours. 
the black woman does go out of her race to date. That is true. But she does not go out of her race to date nowhere nearly as often as the black man does. And we're not purely speaking of black male celebrities. Professional black men, working class black men even, are also suffering from the snow bunny crisis. So this is not limited to celebrities. This is a black community-wide issue. Statistically, mm -hmm. the black man, not the black woman, but the black man, dates and marries outside of his race more than the men of every other race in America put together as a proportion of the overall population. In other words, if you're going to tell me that love is blind, you're going to have to explain how is the black man's love for the white woman so much more blinder than every other man's love for women outside of his race. Clearly, this relates to slavery. Clearly, this relates to the inferiority complex. Clearly, this relates to I wish I was a white man complex. And clearly, this relates to self-hate and having an issue with loving a woman who looks like the mother who brought you into this world.